Have y'all ever read a book that was so good that you had to just get up and go tell somebody? Well, bitch, I read two. <laughs> what's up beautiful people and welcome back to the channel how are we doing are we hitting those reading goals are the books doing what they need to do y'all i have two right here if you love fantasy paranormal romance you love it filthy smutty you love great world building you want a little humor up in that bitch too look i have two books that have just altered my brain chemistry like they are that good <laughs> one is a new release one is not a new release but it is new to me and I am so happy that I picked up this book on a whim I have two fantasy dark fairy tale retellings for y'all to put on your TBR immediately so grab a cup of coffee get cozy and let's talk about these dirty filthy ass reads oh where to start where to start okay we'll start with the more familiar so if you have been watching me if you have specifically come over from my my um main channel over to the book channel you have heard me talk about the deliciously dark fairy tales series from kf breen this is one of those that you either with it or you ain't they are dark fairy tale retellings but they have like, a, I, it's more of like comedic erotica, right? Because you have these dark high fantasy elements with heavy doses of smut and the characters are so funny and deeply unserious. And if you don't vibe with that kind of humor, you won't vibe with it. But I think that if that wasn't for you in the first set of the Deliciously Dark Fairy Tales, this one will. The first set in the Deliciously Dark Fairy Tales follows Nefane and Finley. It is a Beauty and the Beast retelling and it's giving us everything. We have a kingdom that has been thrown into the Dark Ages. We have shifters that are unable to shift and they're being controlled by very powerful sex demons. What? I told you it's, it's deeply unserious, okay? <laughs> um, and we have Finley and her Dragon King, okay? It's great, it's filthy, it's smutty, but we do get really great plot after like the second book. The second book is like, they just fuck it, <laughs> fuck it. But the rest of it, like it really delves deep into the plot and the lore of this world. And so now we have a cage of crimson and I'm so excited. This is a Red Riding Hood retelling that is featuring one of my favorite characters from the base of the series. Weston. We meet Weston towards the end of Finley and Nathane's story and he ends up becoming a big part of their found family dynamic. He is an alpha werewolf and right now he is on a journey. Aurelia. She is our Red Riding Hood. But the thing is Red Riding Hood is cooking up drugs and Granny is moving weight y'all. Yes. <laughs> Granny is moving weight. So Aurelia has a very tortured past. She is kind of known for being strikingly beautiful, but also being a town pariah because she does not have any magic. She is a wolfless wolf. Throughout her childhood, she and her mother were chased out of many lands. This ended up leading to the death of her mother, and that is how she ended up stumbling upon Granny. Granny takes her in and discovers that Aurelia has, she has some skills with plants. And so Granny makes Aurelia the cooker and the brains behind their drug operation as far as these things go. But Aurelia is very naive and she is very much focused on surviving. And so she is blind to the fact that Granny is running an operation that is killing thousands, okay? And Weston has been tasked by the dragon queen and king to find the person that is making these drugs and bring them in for their sentencing because they are sick of the addiction that is running rampant through their kingdom. Of course, when Weston pulls up to go pick up the cooker, he finds out that she's his fated mate. 
And instead of taking her in, he ends up banging her in the middle of the forest. <laughs> Y'all, it's, it's convoluted, but work with me, okay? This complicates things, right? Because not only do we have Weston realizing that he has waited his whole life for something that a lot of people don't get, which is finding their God-given fated mate that he is going to have to figure out how he is going to let go. But then he also comes to realize that Aurelia is not the problem. Yes, she makes drugs, but what she makes is essentially medicine. And he finds out that she has been deeply manipulated and abused throughout her life and that she has no idea what is being done to what she is actually creating. She thinks she's creating things to just you know, basically help with anxiety and depression. N nah, people are hooked like they on crack. Okay? This brings up a lot of issues. This was, y'all, this was so good. I love a, a faded mate dynamic, but there is so much, like, tension and, like, hate fucking because, like, he is her jailer. But she is absolute, like, she still wants to submit to him and give him everything. But she also has this feeling of, like, wanting to run and wanting to dominate. Because she is not magicless the way she thinks that she is magicless, okay? Y'all, first of all, we get Hadriel again in here. Hadriel is our <laughs> mediocre butler that we were introduced to in the beginnings of the Deliciously Dark Fairy Tale series. Um, he is a wolf and he is traveling with this pack to kind of try to try to get his bearings and try to be with his people right and so Weston tasks Hadriel with being Aurelia's companion because he knows that like Hadriel is one of the girls and he can get anything out of anybody even though he is absolutely just unserious silly he's a strange one man be walking around with clothes that got little dicks embroidered on him he is strange, but Hadriel is smart. And he ends up just so down bad and loyal to Aurelia. And I absolutely, like, I thought I loved Finley and Hadriel. No, Aurelia and Hadriel, I love that their friendship is everything. <clears throat> and he is so down bad for her, even though he has his loyalties to his pat, he still 100% is like, girl, do what you need to do. He's important and we can't afford to lose him, but do what you need to do because you are in the right to. Look, I, mm, y'all, this was so good. It was the perfect balance of like plot and smut. We have this love-hate relationship between our two main characters. There is also a lot of like withholding of information. There is some like, dubious consent there as well um it's dark and it's kind of messed up but it's so good and there were a lot of parts of this that really made me emotional because you see how much she has been manipulated and emotionally gaslit and abused throughout her lifetime like Aurelia's journey is a sad one but there is so much potential with her being with Weston and being Weston's mate but Weston is struggling with wanting to be loyal to the people who have become his new family and his pack and wanting to be loyal to the person that is supposed to be attached to him for the rest of his life. Look, if you love werewolf stories, if you love faded mates, if you want something that's going to be dark and filled with plot, but still like funny, like still gives kind of like rom-com, Y'all, this was so good. I ate it up. And the end. There is a book two. I don't know if there's going to be more than a book two. It comes out in September. But the end of this, y'all, had me screaming, crying, throwing up. Screaming, crying, throwing up. Y'all, it was so good. Just get into it. If you have... These two books that I'm talking about today, if you have never trusted me on anything else, trust me on these. And I even feel like even if... Initially, this series was not for you. I feel like A Cage of Crimson is going to change your mind on KF Breen. 
I'm just saying. It was so good. She hit it out of the park. I already adored this series. I didn't think that I could adore it even more, but now I do. Now, can I get all of my white shoes girlies to the front? All of my white shoes girlies, come, come here, come here. This book. <laughs> Girl, you need it. Cinder Glass by Kaylin Johnson. I don't know if I am pronouncing your name right. Someone, if, if it's pronounced differently, please let me know. I've heard a million different pronunciations and I don't know if any of them are correct, okay? Um, this is a dark, wide shoes Cinderella retelling. I don't know if they plan on stopping, but I've got to keep going. Um, this is a dark, wide shoes Cinderella retelling that, mm, y'all, this world I just, I didn't see any of this coming. We have our girl, Summer, okay? And Summer is currently living with her stepmother and her two stepsisters following her father's death. Now, the stepmom and the sisters don't really fuck with her. She's basically the maid of the house. We, we, know, we know Cinderella, okay? Um, but things are kind of different in this world because, because, this is a world of humans and fae. And fae magic is granted to people that are given specific statuses, okay? And so we know that we have this ball coming up and they're getting ready and everything um, because the prince is looking for a wife. But that doesn't matter for Summer because her stepmother has already married her off to an L. Think of an L like a lord, okay? Um, he has been granted magical powers, okay? So he has magic. Um, and he is not a good man. He is a very, 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 very bad man. Very bad, very bad. Mm -hmm. um, and Summer doesn't want that shit. The only thing she wants is her blacksmith. She has this blacksmith that she has been working with for a while and she has she has been down bad for this man for a minute, but has never really made any moves on him. Even though she gets vibes, she's never made any moves. So when she finds out that she is being married off to this awful person, she's like, you know what? I do not want to have to be given over to this person without giving myself to the person that I want. And that is the blacksmith. Well, the blacksmith has some plans of his own because she doesn't know that the blacksmith is actually the prince's brother. And so the blacksmith and this really fine ass fey male that she encountered at the market has been watching her help devise a plan. And they come up with a plan that the prince is going to marry Summer so that she can be with all of them. He's marrying her for his brother, but they all want a piece of Summer, okay? They all want a piece of Summer. Our female Ember, our blacksmith, and our prince are all down bad. Listen, she went from never having been with a man to literally getting it with the blacksmith then getting it with her little fey dude. I love Ember. He's great. And then being on her knees for the prince, y'all. <laughs> Look, Summer was getting it in. And that's not all. Because in all of this, not only is the man that she is supposed to be marrying a horrible person, but he also has a genie that is in his control. And this genie has been basically his slave for ages. And he also has feelings for Summer too. But their relationship is difficult because he can't do much to help Summer outside of very small things that don't interfere with the elves' wishes. There are some very difficult things that happen in this book. There is great on page so just be aware of that it does not happen to the fmc it is attempted though but it is it's hard to watch and it is graphic so be mindful of that if that is a trigger for you 
there is on page great okay this is one of the best books i've read this year this is contending with a love song for Ricky Wilde. This was amazing. Y'all know I love white shoes. I love white shoes and polydynamics in general. Um, I love it when I get it in a good fantasy. The magic system in this, I absolutely adore. I love that you don't necessarily know what you're gonna get with people, right? You don't really understand how much power they have. There are some people that we think are powerless that may not be as powerless as they, as they seem. Um, we have some extra dark elements when we get our girl Cruella up in there because we get Cruella in here. We get y'all. Um, it is whimsical and dark. And the relationship dynamics between these characters, I absolutely adore. Um, the way that Summer's relationship develops with one of the stepsisters. I love it. I'd love to see where they go. Um, I also love the relationship and how different each one is between her and each guy. So we have Ember who is a fae. He is full-blooded fae. He has fire magic. I mean, he is feisty, okay? He is the one who turns Summer into an Ella. So we have Elves and Ellas, which are like lords and ladies essentially who have magic. Um, and he gives her with that power by way of, of his dick. <laughs> it's spice with a purpose, okay? Um, but he is so just unwaveringly adoring of her. Like, he absolutely just adores Summer. And then you have the blacksmith who is this unwavering strength, like, you know that he is going to be there for her. He is going to be her support. He is going to be there for her emotionally. He is very much the husband of the group. Like he he is the husband of the group. He's he's the dad of the group, you know? Like I love it. He he's the one that is is very much um mature, head on straight, but is going to figure things out, okay? I love the way he loves her. And then we have our prince who they have, you know, kind of a rocky relationship because he struggles with dishonesty and Summer is not always very honest with him. Um, and it causes some risks in their relationship. But he also is not just down bad for her, but he is down bad for his brother. And so he will do anything to make sure that his brother gets everything that he deserves in life, including making sure that he makes Summer happy. And so it's kind of a twofold dynamic of like, he definitely has feelings for her. He has this really deep burning, like DS dynamic with Summer, but he also is not just invested for her. He's invested because he wants to see his brother happy. And then we have our genie. He is such a tortured soul. And there's, I can't wait to see what happens with him because you get like these really, kind of tender moments with him but there is a lot of trauma in the relationship between summer and this genie because he is forced to do things that are kind of unforgivable until you understand what's really going on and all he wants to do is be free and really he doesn't even want to be free he just wants to belong to her um y'all it's it's so good it's so good I finished these and I was like, I have to get on camera and talk about these because how can I not? I definitely want to do more book reviews and I felt like this is a great place to start. I got to start pulling quotes and stuff out of these just so y'all can get a feel for how the writing styles and all of that. But I was just so deeply immersed in these books. I didn't even have time to pull out tabs and annotate anything. They are both so good. If you love fairy tale retellings and you've been looking for something dark, but not quite in the way of like an Emily McIntyre because those really differ. These are more so in line with the fairy tales themselves, but they still have their own very unique magic systems. They have their own very unique characters. I, mm, y'all, these were so good. These were so good. Make sure you check your triggers accordingly. These both do have very significant trigger lists. So make sure you are checking those warnings before you dive in. 
um and happy reading i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know if you want to see more book reviews like this and i will see y'all in the next one